Good morning, everybody. Good morning, grandmas. Today is Sunday, August 5th or August 6th. August 6th. Let's go through some sales we had today. 18 round drum sold on eBay only for $10. Uh, P3F RPG video game. The best RPG of 2007. I think it sold for like 16 on eBay. Not bad. And the little itty bitty raspberry Pi sold for 30 bucks on Amazon. Logitech webcam that I found with TY Hipstar sold. I think I listed that yesterday. That sold quickly, 26 bucks. I got a pretty decent amount of orders going out Monday morning. Some people ask what label printer I use. Zebra ZP450. Got this at a flea market in Miami when I was hanging out with my buddy Carlos. 10 bucks. They're not cheap. I could probably sell it on Amazon for 100. The driver communication to, to Apple is not the best. The labels print out decent. They're not super crisp, but I've never had an issue with it. Packages going out is what we got so far for the weekend. And I cannot tell you how much easier it is to ship when you have the correct packing materials and shipping materials at your fingertips. You got different size poly bags. You've got your humongous ones for tennis rackets. You have labels if you need labels. The correct size boxes. You have envelopes like crazy. It's a small expense, but having the correct shipping supplies makes your life so much easier and the workflow so much more enjoyable rather than playing Frankenstein on like every single package. I do recycle some packages here and there especially the dunnage whatever comes in I, I chuck it in there for the dunnage but for the most part people are getting pretty new packages from me i'm always down for amazon items because i'm gonna do an fba shipment when this this bin gets full and then we'll do a restart on the fba bin but i have all these items merchant fulfilled right now so as they sell i get rid of them the bin gets a little bit smaller the bin gets a little bit bigger when I thrift, and then when it gets full enough, I already have the items listed. I just have to convert them to FBA, maybe raise the prices a little bit, and then send them in. That's my little FBA system right now. So I got an old Sony Hi8 in front of me, this specific model, CCD TR101. I love selling these things. There's a couple issues with them, why people don't want to sell them. Number one, you have to have the correct power supply. The batteries normally are dead on these because they're from the late 80s and 90s. So you get these power supplies that it, it goes right onto the battery contacts and it powers the camera straight from that power supply. So once you get the correct power supply hooked up, you wanna test a couple functions. You wanna test number one, if uh, the camera records. To, in order to do that, you have to have the correct format of media. In this case, it's a video high eight. So we're gonna see if we can record something on this high eight camera. The doors sometimes are broken on these. You wanna make sure the door takes the tape Let's go to camera, pop off our lens cap. Oh, look at that. There's the TV. Here's me. Hi, mom. Hi, mom. But the main function that people use these for is not to film on. It's to transfer from tape to TV. So I have it hooked up to the components that it hooks up to. And then we put a tape in there. We go rewind forward make sure it doesn't eat the tape. You want to do that first because why would somebody want to put their their whole movies in here if it's just going to eat the tape so you want to put the tape in forward reverse take the tape out see if it got destroyed and then hook up the components make sure you're on the like video not the camera mode vtr hit play make sure you're on the right tv channel and then we got home movies and that's scary so I can see that it's working well for the video transfer. So everything on this one seems good to go. The only issue that I see is a cosmetic. This is like really sticky right here, but this is not a, um, a you, they're not using this to use it as a camera, obviously. They're using it solely for the function as a player because the, the high eight tapes are difficult to, to play. So when we list these, we're gonna wanna list it with a camera. Maybe you can list it with like a blank tape if you have one laying around the charger. And you wanna include some cables right here and just make it all nice listing. I'm probably gonna put this up for like 50 to 80 bucks and it should be all good. A lot of people don't see any value in these, but they, there is um, a pretty good amount of value in them. Whenever listing a bundle, I like to rubber band the cords together. It just keeps everything organized. This will all eventually go in a bag or a box and then get put on the shelf. Good lighting, obviously this is not the best background. It's distracting from this carpet right here, but the lighting from that window is pretty decent. Take a picture of 
everything that's showing for your first picture, just overwhelm the customer with items. Just show them everything. Rather than me having the first picture being like this, like a top down of all the stuff, it just looks like it's all complete and everything. So I'm gonna do that. Get this listed, put it up for like 80, I think I put it up for like 89 bucks, free ship. Every single day. Boom, snack of the day. Found a stowaway snack in my bicycle bag that I never got to. Candamina. I got it because it looks like bacon strips, but I think it's like a Coca-Cola jelly snack or a gummy snack. It looks like it expires August 2017. It feels like they've been melted into one gummy. It smells like it's supposed to be like a cola gummy or something. Resealable bag and a Mexican style dude with a cactus and a burro. It's like one giant candy now. I've definitely had something similar to this. It's like the gummy version of bottle caps or maybe a uh, like a more powdery version of, of the Coke gummies that you see sometimes in the convenience stores. They look like little pieces of bacon. I thought it was, I was thinking it possibly could have been a bacon flavored candy. Fortunately or unfortunately, it's not. Not bad, probably awful for me, probably full of corn syrup. Considering this thing has been through a bike tour and sitting in the hot garage for like two months, I would say snack of the day was a success. So I just got some pretty terrible news from Rachel in Dubai. Her cat, Kiki, she got bit by a snake yesterday, but made it back to their house before she died and died on the back, the back, um, in the, near the backyard when she was trying to come back to her house where she lives. Her family's pretty torn up. The cat was part of their family and they're very non-pet people. Kiki, she was an Oklahoma cat from a barn. She nursed off of a dog, a Cocker Spaniel, and she had a personality closer to a dog where she would just like flop over, let you pet her belly, and really friendly. Um, she wasn't very shy at all. She softened Rachel's heart to cats. I really don't like cats that much, but she softened me up to cats. Her whole family didn't like pets, but they melted for her. And um, her dad really liked Kiki because he's like ready to be a, grand, a grandfather. And, and when we brought Kiki back to Florida, it gave him somebody to take care of, like a little granddaughter cat. It was unexpected. She was a young cat, only about two years old. She enjoyed playing outside chasing lizards. Either she tried to play with a snake or she walked by a snake at the wrong place at the wrong time. It hurts to lose a pet. If anyone else that has lost a pet, how did y'all cope with it? Because Rachel's taking it pretty hard and I know she's gonna read through the comments. Thing is, is it is just a cat, like it's not a human life, but it feels like it was at least a part of the family. And it's not anything comparable to a mother, grandfather, or losing a son or daughter, brother, sister, but it still hurts either way. And this is, um, there's a picture of the funeral where she was buried. 